everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we are going to be talking about 1975's Three Days of the Condor. And we're also going to be talking about its brand new 4K Blu-ray that just came out from Kino Lorber. So Three Days of the Condor is a 1975 spy thriller directed by Sidney Pollack, who's known for directing a lot of conspiracy spy thriller films like this, such as The Firm. He also directed Tootsie, and he directed the 1985 Best Picture winner, Out of Africa. So he's a very famous director, one of the best to ever do it, and this is probably his best film and I absolutely love Three Days of the Condor. It stars Robert Redford as Turner, a man who we don't know at the very beginning of this film what he does. They just describe him as a reader. He's working at this place that looks like it's just a regular old job and one day he goes out to get lunch. He comes back and the other seven people he works with are all dead. They've all been shot to death, so he has no idea what's going on. He runs outside. He doesn't call the cops, which is very suspicious to us, but he does call somebody up, gives him his code name, which is Condor, and they say, hey, all right, cool. We're going to send out your section chief. He's going to come pick you up. And, you know, he's already a little suspicious. That's the thing about Robert Redford's character in this movie. He is the most intelligent person in the room. Like I said, they describe him as a reader. That's the best way to describe him. They're just like, yeah, he just reads everything, and he just takes it in like a sponge. So he knows everything, even if he isn't a field agent. And at this point, we don't know exactly what he's a field agent for or not a field agent for. So once he's, you know, supposed to go get picked up, he has a friendly come in, another buddy of his. And then someone comes out of the shadows, tries to kill him. He fires a gun off, shoots that guy. But the guy who got shot, who we think is his, uh, you know, his boss, ends up killing his buddy, shoots him right in the head. So now we're really suspicious, and things just get out of hand from this point on. He ends up kidnapping Faye Dunaway, who has no idea what the hell is going on. And this is probably the biggest flaw of this movie. And I never really thought of it as a flaw until I saw the movie Out of Sight, directed by Steven Sodenberg. And in that film, George Clooney and Jennifer Lopez are talking about the fact that Faye Dunaway's character in Three Days of the Condor can just get past all of the kidnapping and all of the craziness going on and still end up having sex with Robert Redford within one day. I never really thought of that as an issue because, you know, it's a two-hour movie. We got to fill the plot somewhere. And... You know, we obviously don't have enough time to flesh out this relationship, but it definitely does feel like a 1970s thing. Let's force the sex scene into this movie. Let's let us let them become lovers. I mean, really, a sane person is not going to fall for somebody and just trust everything they're saying, even though it is shown that he does almost get assassinated by the mailman, so maybe he's not lying. But that is after they've already had sex, so it does raise some questions about her sanity as well. But Robert Redford's character is just so good in this movie. I mean, it's a conspiracy thriller, so I don't want to spoil this movie if you haven't seen it. Just know that, you know, there's a lot of twists and turns throughout this movie. A lot of twists. A lot of twists in this thing. But my favorite character in this film is played by Max von Sydow, one of the greatest actors to ever do it. We just talked about him recently in The Exorcist, but he's also just one of the best actors to ever do it. And this performance is just incredible. I always love seeing hitmen on film and just how they're portrayed, but this is my favorite type of hitman, a hitman with, like, class and culture. I always wonder, like, how these guys get these jobs. Like, what do you have to do? Do you have to apply? Like, you don't know, I, uh, you know, I, uh, I've decided that I wanted to take on the job of an assassin, so. So I figured, you know, if you guys need that, you're looking for someone, I'm your guy. Obviously, they pluck these guys out of the army and whatnot and sharpshooters and all that kind of stuff. People will probably lack emotion. But Max von Sydow's hitman does have emotion and he basically lays out the reason why he does this job and the benefits of being a hitman to Robert Redford's character later in the film, which I just absolutely love. You know, he's just a cultured man. He's like, they show, they make sure to show us in this film how peaceful he is, how relaxed he is at all times, how he doesn't jump to conclusions, how you have to just stay rational in any situation. And that's why the agency, as they're called in this movie, which we find out later, is the CIA why they would hire him for certain jobs because he's a freelancer. He doesn't have his own boss. And like he says, he doesn't have to pick a side because of that. He's just there to do his job and only really care about yourself. And if you could just take that away from your mind, you'll have no problem. But Robert Redford's character is like, I don't know, that job sounds like it'll get a little tiresome for me. Also, it's probably not that rewarding in the end emotionally, but, I mean, if you have that in your system, I guess that's the kind of job you go for. But his performance in this movie is just fantastic. And another thing, this is a 1970s film, so it could be forgiven if it didn't move along at a pretty quick pace. But this does move along at a great pace, and I really gotta credit the editing in this movie for that. It moves along so well. It's also just so, so well shot. Like, the tension that they build up in the opening of this movie to when the people end up getting killed in the office building, all that stuff is done so well. That could just 
just be very boring. You know, most films would just let the camera sit there, not move it around at all, not even have any edits, especially in the 1970s. But you don't have that issue in this movie. That plus the score just helps build up that tension and it just pays off in spades. And then this whole movie building up to the third and final act of this movie. Again, it's a spy thriller. So even though there's not many action scenes in this movie, the ones that are in here are all fantastic. Well edited, great jump cuts. I just absolutely love how the action scenes are portrayed in this movie. But we don't get a big action-packed ending like they would do today in 2023 with a film like this. They actually just, you know, let it play out in the most rational, thoughtful way, and it pays off. It's just that good of a screenplay. And this movie has been an inspiration on so many other films, including a film that Robert Redford is even featured in, in the MCU, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. But you could also see the trademarks of this movie all over the place, especially in the third act and how the film ends. In a film that came out a few years ago, Summer of 84, the ending to that movie definitely took some inspiration from the ending of this film, and that's kind of one of my favorite endings in recent horror films, so if you haven't seen Summer of 84, I can highly recommend that as well. It's just awesome to see that the, so many people are inspired by this film, and it's one of the best spy thrillers I've ever seen, and even comparing it to 1970s James Bond movies... I enjoy those movies somewhat. Like I've always said it, Roger Moore is not my favorite James Bond. But this movie is just blowing the rest of those Bond films away, especially in the 1970s. I would have to say that this still is a top five spy film. One of the best to ever do it. If you haven't seen Three Days of the Condor, you owe it to yourself to check this one out. It's going to grip you. It's going to definitely take you on a journey. Lots of twists and turns. Like I said, you'll just have a great time watching this film. And I can highly recommend it. Even if you don't want to check out this Kino Lore Before K Blu-ray that we're going to talk about right now. But before we do that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, movie reviews, lists, podcasts, and shorts, we try and do them all here on the channel. Nothing would help this channel out more than by you just simply liking this video and subscribing to the channel. I work for the CIA. I am not a spy. Well, here's the Kino Lorber 4K Blu-ray that was just released. I didn't grab it when it first came out. I actually waited for the Kino Lorber sale that's going on right now, and I didn't grab it through Kino Lorber. I actually grabbed it through Amazon so I can get it pretty quick. And for the price I got it for, this was an absolute steal. Right out of the gate, before we even go any further, the visuals on this 4K Blu-ray are stunning. 10 out of 10 visuals. You get HDR10, Dolby Vision. I tested them both out. They both look really good, but I would say the edge goes to Dolby Vision in this case. It's also going to be presented in the aspect ratio of 2.75, so you're going to have the black bars on the top and bottom of your screen. But don't worry about that. It's an absolute visual showpiece. This is definitely one of those films from the 1970s you could show someone and be like, this is why we have 4K for films like this, films that look absolutely gorgeous now look like they were shot yesterday while retaining the 70s look and tone this is what you want to do with the 4k format you don't want to ruin what you remember but you want to enhance it and bring it to the modern day and they absolutely do that with this 4k i mean the blacks are deep all the colors pop off the screen i read some complaints about the blues being a little bit too bright in this movie you know obviously there's some actors with some bright blue eyes and some of the clothes might look a little brighter but i think that's just credited to the cooler temperature of this film in general so that's that's why it looks like that and it just absolutely looks gorgeous on your screen even when you compare it to the 1080p blu-ray that's in here which is surprising because it's the same scan that's just how good of a job the 4k is doing is because that blu-ray is pretty good but the blu-ray to 4k it's a huge jump and the 4k is really what you want to see if you want to see this in the highest quality visually i mean it's just i can go on and on about how good this look i actually had my wife sit next to me and i'm like you believe how good of a 4k is and she was like yeah it's unbelievable but they really kept the 70s tone and and that's really to credit to the way it's shot and to the, you know, the costumes that they're wearing back then. Everything looks like the 1970s. Obviously, all the technology, which is always a funny aspect of this film, how computers are a big aspect of the entire movie. And it's way ahead of what we would be getting to now, almost 50 years later, for this movie to just show what computers were like in the mid-70s. And looking at it through 2023 20, eyes, it's just incredible how much technology has jumped in such a short period of time. But that's just a little mini ramble. And then you also get a great audio track in here. It's a DTS HD 5.1. You also have your choice of a DTS HD 2.0. Numerous commentary tracks, actually, on the Blu-ray and the 4K, which is really cool, including one with Sidney Pollock, which is the one I would personally recommend. And all of your extras are going to be on that second Blu-ray disc, which I'll show you right now, because you get a really nice slipcover right here. You slide this out. 
Same exact artwork underneath. Really nice artwork. Pop it open. It's a Kino Lorber, so you know that you're going to have the disc design that Kino Lorber loves to use. They're individual disc design exclusive to their company. You get the 4K. You get the Blu-ray. So it is a two-disc set. So we always love that here. So you get the downgraded version on the second disc, and that's where all your extras are going to be. And there aren't too many extras, but there are a couple commentary tracks, a great hour-long Sidney Pollock documentary that I really enjoyed. And you get like a 27-minute featurette, a previously released featurette about, you know, Three Days of the Condor. And you also get a ton of trailers. I don't know why Kino Lorber insists on doing this. I guess it's just to make it look like it's loaded up with more extras than there really are. But they put about eight different trailers for other Kino Lorber movies that have been released or are about to be released. So... That stuff kind of annoys me a little bit because it is 2023 and you could just watch any trailer or any film you want here on YouTube. So there's no reason for you to really have them all on the disc other than to be filler and for promotional materials to say, hey, we loaded this up with extras. But the extras that are on here that are actually real extras like the making ofs, the featurettes, the audio commentary, stuff like that. Even though there's not many of them, the ones that are on here are really solid. So I do give them a good passing grade for that because... At least they gave us something. The second Blu-ray disc, when I talk about companies like Paramount and Warner Brothers and how they compare to these boutique labels, you know, that's one thing. This is about, you know, on sale, I was able to get it for $21, where you get a Warner Brothers 4K, and a lot of the time you just get one disc and a slip cover, and that's really it. No extras whatsoever, and they'll have the balls to charge you 28 bucks for that. And that's just absolutely ridiculous. When you get a nice release like this of a classic film that people still love to this very day. And if you haven't seen it, you're going to love it. And to give us all that and plus all the bells and whistles and a fantastic transfer. Really, you can't go wrong if you want to grab this 4K Blu-ray. I can highly recommend it. If I was going to give this 4K Blu-ray a score of 1 to 10, I would give this a solid 9 out of 10. I can highly recommend it. But it's also Friday and that means it's time for our Digital Code Giveaway. Every single Friday here on the channel, I'm going to ask you guys two digital code giveaway questions. All you have to do is answer one of those in the comment section below. And as long as you do that, you come back to Monday's video. I put your name on a magic wheel. We spin that bad boy two times. And the two names that lands on, they have their choice of the digital codes that you've seen on your screen before you today. And what are this week's two digital code giveaway questions? Well, we're talking about Robert Redford here, and Robert Redford has been in a lot of movies over the years. I don't know if he's considered one of the greatest actors ever. I know, I know he's considered one of the most charming and one of the most handsome actors ever. I've been compared to him based on looks before, so I understand how that goes. You liar! But Robert Redford has been in a lot of movies that I personally love, mainly Sneakers. Sneakers is my absolute favorite of his movies, but Three Days of the Condor would be up there. He's appeared in the MCU, so I wanted to know, what is your favorite Robert Redford film? And also, this is a spy thriller. I want to know, what's your favorite spy film of all time? It doesn't have to be a spy thriller or a political thriller, just any film involving spies. So if you want to pick The Pink Panther, go for that. I would appreciate that as well. Those are great movies. The originals and the Steve Martin ones. So make sure you answer one of those in the comments section below. And then don't forget to come back to Monday's video to see if you are this week's lucky winner. And if you guys want to grab this Kino Lorber 4K from Amazon, I do have an Amazon affiliate link that I will leave in the description below. It costs you no extra money and it really really does help to support the channel but the best way to support this channel is just by simply liking this video subscribing to the channel getting out in those streets and telling your friends about us and we'll be seeing you around